How did a few hundred Spaniards beat millions of Aztecs? There are a few reasons why, and one of them was the big deciding factor. Let's get started. It's Easter Sunday in 1519 in Tenochtitlan, the capital of the Aztec Empire. But wait, the Aztecs aren't Christian, are they? Why is it important that it's Easter? It's important to the Spaniards who are arriving, amazed by what they have found. A city bigger than most of them have ever seen. Five times bigger than Sevilla, the largest city in Spain at the time. There aren't many Spaniards, and for some reason, Moctezuma, the Aztec ruler, rolls out the figurative red carpet. He gives them a grand tour, exchanges gifts, and houses them in palaces. You may be wondering, why isn't he just killing them? Very good question, but we'll get to that later. It's August 1521. Hernan Cortes is standing over the rubble and ruin of Tenochtitlan, the Aztec capital. What happened? What was the central cause of the collapse of the Aztec Empire? How did we get to this point? Let's rewind to two years earlier. See this guy? He's our main villain, Hernan Cortes. He's rampaging through the Maya, demanding that they give him treasure. They keep saying they don't have much, but they know of a group further north who have a lot. So he heads north. He spots some bigger groups, but they aren't who he's looking for. He hears that they aren't too happy with their overlords, though. These overlords are the Aztecs. So he persuades some of them to join him. So the first thing to look at are the numbers involved. There are a few hundred Spaniards and some natives on their side. There are three million Aztecs. Many of them are warriors, so the initial numbers aren't important here. Cortes and the conquistadors eventually turn up to Tenochtitlan, the place they've heard all about. It's incredible. See this? It's the first meeting of Moctezuma and Cortes. He welcomes them as guests, puts them in palaces. Everything's chill for a while. But then, for unknown reasons, Cortes takes Moctezuma prisoner. So numbers weren't the big deal. What was? Was the capture of their ruler a big deal? Yes, but it didn't cause their collapse. See this? While he's been playing puppet master in Tenochtitlan, his boss has sent 1,400 troops to arrest him for disobeying orders. He leaves the city to meet them. He tells them that they'd be way better off joining and not arresting him. These Aztecs have everything you could want, he tells them. They join him. They head back to the city, and something is wrong. The vibe has shifted. While he was away, his trusty lieutenant was in charge. The Aztecs decide to put on a festival honoring one of their gods. They are dancing and celebrating. This trusty lieutenant decides this and stop. He blocks the exits and starts to butcher the Aztecs in the area. This is why everything has changed since Cortes left. These images show the Noche Triste. For the next few weeks, the Spaniards have to be careful. Whenever they leave their accommodation, there's a danger they'll be killed as revenge. Eventually, Cortes tries to calm them down by wheeling out Moctezuma on the Great Temple. What happened next is disputed. Either way, Moctezuma is killed by Cortes or by his own people. We'll never know. This triggers all-out rebellion. The Aztecs attack all at once. They kill so many Spaniards and Tlaxcalans that there are bodies clogging up the lake around the city. Even when Cortes and just a few hundred Spanish soldiers have managed to get out of the city, the Aztecs hunt them down until they reach safe ground. That was the Noche Triste, or Sad Night. Cortes is devastated. He felt so close to achieving his dream of controlling Tenochtitlan, and now it was further away than ever. So back to the question at hand. Was Tet important in the Aztec collapse? If it was, then it didn't help them much on the Noche Triste, did it? But stick a pin in that for now. We're going to look at the third and final contender on how the conquistadors beat the mighty Aztec Empire. But first, what happened after the Noche Triste? Cortes and his allies spend five months working on a grand plan to bring down the empire. He takes apart any ships they had access to, transported them to the lake, and rebuilt them as smaller boats. He uses those boats to spy on the Aztecs while he's prepping. The plan? The siege of Tenochtitlan. Time to bring European-style warfare to the Aztecs started on the 15th of May, 1521. He attacks from three sides of the city. Crucially, the Aztecs can't counter the boats which are helping attack them on land. It 
don't worry, I wasn't lying when I said tech wasn't that important. This wasn't significant to the end. What was, though, was that the Aztecs weren't doing well at all in these five months. And Cortes knew it. They weren't able to put anywhere near as big a fight as they had done before. Something was wrong. The reason they were so weak? See this virus? The disease had ripped through them, killing around 40% of the population of the region. Oddly enough, it wasn't affecting the Spanish as much. This disease was smallpox, and it was completely new to the Americans. None of the natives, including the Aztecs, had any immunity, and this proved crucial. The Aztecs lose more and more of the city. They make a last stand in the market district, but they are too weak. They lose. Afterwards, when all is said and done, the Spanish murder many of the warriors and attack many of the women. The city lies in ruin. So no one, including Cortes, gets what they wanted from this whole thing. But the Spanish build it back up. And today, it's Mexico City. Once again, one of the biggest cities in the world. So we've seen how the Spanish Empire got started, but how about when their money from the New World started to dry up and things went wrong for them? Check this out to see what happened in the War of the Spanish Succession. <laughs>